Now, our I-Team investigation repair nightmare is raising the question, what really happens to your car while you wait for it to be fixed? A local grandfather took his Jeep to an Orange Park dealership and was told it would be repaired in a few days. A year later, the job still has not been done. He contacted investigator Jennifer Waugh for help. Jen? Tom and Joy, to grasp the significance of this story and its impact on a local family, you really have to understand the love between a grandfather and his grandson. 72-year-old Eddie Richardson saved his money for years so he could buy his only grandson a car for his 16th birthday. It was used, it had a dent in the back, but the Jeep Grand Cherokee became Travis Beck's pride and joy. He's a beautiful pianist. Everything about him, every breath he takes, since the day he was born, I've been proud of him. 17-year-old Travis Beck is not only an accomplished pianist, but he's a good student and even works two jobs. One of them playing piano for the choir at West Kennett United Methodist Church. Getting to work in school is hard without a car, so buying him one for his 16th birthday was a no-brainer for his grandfather. You had to pull him back down. It was like he had helium in his ankles. He was off the ground. He, uh, he loved the car. He was ecstatic. It was a 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited, which I never did find out what the Limited meant, but <laughs> it had an inline six in it, which is just a great engine. I loved it. I had my own car. When it started sputtering, though, after a few months, Richardson took it to the Dark Cars Chrysler Jeep dealership on Blanding Boulevard to be fixed. It wasn't where he had bought the Jeep, but... So I've always taken my cars to the dealership. I trust the dealership before I'll trust Joe Blow down the street. He was told it needed a wiring harness, an expensive fix that required a deposit. Yeah, you know, I gave him $1,000 to buy the part. They told me the part would be in either Saturday or Monday, probably Monday. Give them two more days and they'd have it in and I'd have my car. But by the end of the week, he still had not heard from the dealership. So I went over there to ask them, is my car ready? Did I miss your call? What's going on? Uh, they did not have the part in Orlando, but they told me that they had located the part and the part was on its way and it would be probably three or four days. Days turned into weeks. Richardson says there was always an excuse. Oh, that part's not there. We're having to get the part from Minneapolis. We're having to get the part from here. Every time they told me it's coming, it'll be here. Give us three or four more days, three or four more days. Never once did they give me anything more than three or four days. He says he tried to complain to the general manager, even the owner of the dark cars dealership, but says no one would call him back. Months passed. Then another surprise. I got a ticket from FDOT showing my tag on the back of a Chevy caravan. Where? Miami. Miami? He was furious and went to the dealership demanding answers from the service desk. My tag is on my car at your dealership. Why is it on the back of a Chevy cargo van driving through Miami and running tolls? And I cannot say on TV or at church what the guy told me, but he said, that's pretty mm up. That was his excuse. That's pretty mm up. And when he insisted to see his grandson's Jeep. They could not find the key to the car. They didn't even know where it was. Richardson and his brother-in-law searched themselves and did eventually find it. The tag, they say, was on the Jeep, but barely. There was one screw in, one screw off, so the tag was lopsided. Was it like that when you dropped it off initially? No, 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 absolutely not. He thinks someone took it and then replaced it to avoid being noticed. And when he looked inside the Jeep, which he says had been pristinely kept by his grandson. There were Miller highlight beer tabs where you unscrew the lid. There were two of them in the floorboard in the front seat. And there was a Papa John's pizza box in the back seat. What did you think when you saw that? I flipped out. So then I demanded to see the manager of the Chrysler dealership. He was not there. And I asked uh, that he would call me back, and I have yet to hear from him. We went to the dealership to get some answers. Hi, I'm Jennifer Wall with Channel 4 News. Mm -hmm. The service manager came out to speak with us, but did not want to talk with us on camera. He did tell me that the manager responsible for Richardson's Jeep repair had been fired. 
and that anyone could come on the lot during regular business hours to remove one of the car's tags. When we were there, we were able to drive right around back to where all the cars are parked. No one even stopped us. I was surprised that we were able to weave in and out of cars that were parked near the service area without anyone asking us why we were there. A Richardson has filed a lawsuit against the Dark Cars dealership. An attorney representing the company told me this afternoon that because this is a legal matter, there's not a whole lot that he can comment on. He did tell me, however, that the lot is secure and that the gate is locked at night. Security is a very important issue for the dealership and customer satisfaction is important, he tells me, which is why Dark Cars has tried to resolve this matter early on and continue to do this. He insists that there are two sides to the story and these are not issues that need to be litigated, he said on TV, but resolved in a courtroom. Dark Cars, by the way, denies all of the allegations in the lawsuit filed against them. Well, Jen, here at News for Jax, we get so many complaints just in general about car repairs. So what homework can people do to help avoid a possible repair nightmare? It is so important to check backgrounds, do your research. So, for example, if you are having a part replaced on your car, you want to ask if it's going to be a used part or if it will be new. And it's never a bad idea to ask for the repair shop or dealership to give you the old damaged part that they replace to help keep them honest so that you can inspect it for yourself. Now, before you select a repair shop, you want to ask for written estimates if the repairs will be guaranteed. And as I mentioned, Joy, do your homework first. You know, you want to check the repair shop's history with the Better Business Bureau and with the state's Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulations. They will have copies of complaints filed against them. Joy, Tom, so important to do your homework. I cannot say it enough. We see these kinds of complaints all the time. Mm -hmm. We'll be eager to see how this turns out, Jen. Thank you very much.